everyone. We're starting a little late, but it's all good because, oh no, this is not on. <laughs> is it? it well, and I'm going to move this back a little bit, so. I think it's gone that way. <laughs> I think it's on your I got it. Okay. Oh. Oh, his fancy mouse. <laughs> All right. This is in my videos. Okay. <laughs> so, welcome. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We're starting a little late, but that's okay because we're all good now as we have switched up laptops and cameras and yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, welcome. I'm G Lemma, we're Manuia. Tonight we have a very special guest with us, Malia Isaacs, and she's here to kind of tell us a little bit about her story. But before we get to that, um, we're going to start with understanding um, your history of activities. This is a big part of you knowing how you want to package yourself, and even bigger because it starts way before the application process. We're talking about, you know, your freshman year. As soon as you start creating a history of academics your freshman year, you're also creating a history of talent, service, leadership, um, a lot more that goes along with presenting yourself as a competitive applicant. And so thank you so much for joining us. We're going to start with the lemma, um, kind of giving us an idea of what creates a history of activities. So in the common application, if you go into the common application, there's several tabs that you would click on to start filling out. One of those tabs and um, you know, we've reviewed many of the tabs already, but that, that last tab would be activities. So in the activities tab, you have, a, you're given 10 opportunities to list certain activities that you've been involved in, in your high school career or even in your life. Mm -hmm. And these are the 10 activities um, that you're saying that this is what made me who I am. This is what I felt that was, was passionate. And this is the reason why you want me on your campus, because I'm going to take these activities and make an impact on your campus. So many people make the mistake of um, starting the application, you know, junior year, senior year. This would be a critical mistake because that application uh, and so your attempt to create your activities, your history of activities really starts as early as, you know, some people have, 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 have reported activities completed when they were in junior high okay. because it was an experience that gave them growth and where they learned from and really made them who they were. And so if you consciously are trying to set yourself apart in the common application applying to these great universities, then you would want to start as early as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and then what's really important is because life goes on and maybe you forget is to journal your acti your activities or journal the, the activities that you've been involved in in your past um, so that you can readily pull them up and when you're ready to open up that application, fill out the, the application with more detail and more e emotion. And so really the, the earlier you start, and generally ninth grade is okay, and start journaling uh, all the things that you've been involved in, all the special experiences you've had, especially those experiences, even failures. You, 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 do, you can't underestimate your failures because you learn from them. Absolutely. So what we're understanding is that the application process actually starts a lot sooner than you think. Not just your junior year as you're preparing for all these documents, writing essays, um, but actually when you're starting this, this history of activities. And so tonight, um, we brought Malia here because she's a great example of how she's moved forward each year and how. <laughs> well, we need to tell a little bit, a little bit more about Malia's, uh, who she is and what she's accomplished. Right, um, but we really wanted to just give you an example 
of why you want to understand your history and your growth and things that made you who you are and how that transpires over many years. It's not like your junior year, right? Yeah. You did all this, right? It started um, a while back. So first of all, Malia, introduce yourself. Um, tell, tell our audience, our viewers out there. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about who you are and... Um, we can start with maybe what created a history of activity for you. For sure. Um, so I'm Malia Isaacs. Um, I'm a senior at Jordan High School. Uh, I just barely turned 18 years old. And <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. um, I forgot the next question. <laughs> so 18 years old. Yeah. Um, so talk to you a little bit about what you were passionate about and when did it start? Um. Yeah. So. My biggest passion that most people know about is rugby. Like, the sport is just amazing, and it, it like connects people together, and it's really crazy. It's great. Um, so I actually started with Godzilla my freshman year, okay. and I was so bad. <laughs> it was terrible. I, I don't want to watch film. I don't want to see myself get knocked out. It's it's not good. Okay. But um, as the years gone on. I got more comfortable with sport and like with the people and the coaches and like I feel like I've progressed a lot since my freshman year. Good deal. So freshman year, now was this a club team? Was this a high school team? Um, it was a high school team. Okay. Yeah. And then I also played for the Lions my freshman year. Wait uh, a second. The Lions? Now isn't that kind of like an all-star team? Yeah, it's an elite team, but I was definitely left bench. Like I was <laughs> not going in. Um, left bench, but not left out. This girl was, was all about it. Okay. And um, soon enough, in the summer after I first started, it was like six months, seven months after I started, I was invited to go to um, Paris with the Celtic Barbarians, which is a Can Canadian team. And so... Your freshman yeah, year? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So here you are starting, wondering if you really are great at playing this sport. Not, it was then you got on like an all-star team, and then you got on an international team? Yeah, I feel like the only reason I got on the all-star team my freshman year, though, is because they knew my family, and they're like, oh, she will be okay later. Oh. <laughs> so do you have you have brothers and sisters that played this mm -hmm. sport? All oh. of my family has played rugby, so. Okay. So shout out to all the siblings that laid that foundation yeah. for like... It this helps is me a lot. <laughs> Very cool. Well, that's good to know. So they kind of knew of your family and of your potential, I mm -hmm. guess, is what they were seeing. Okay. Yeah, I've known Michael Kressler and Orlando since I was like little, little. I was like nine or something. And they, wow. Yeah, they me forever. <laughs> okay. All right. So that was your freshman year. Yeah. How did that trip go in Paris? It was, it was so fun. It was... <laughs> A dream come true to be able to go to Paris like everybody wants to go to Paris. I've you know? never <laughs> been. I need to go. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> to go to a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was a good experience because you get to see all the different teams and all their different cultures and like when you're walking around the fields you could hear everyone's different songs like and they're oh. in different languages. It was just like cool. Gosh, it sounds like a mini Olympics or something like that. <laughs> I felt bougie, but I mean, <laughs> I was still the bench. So. Aww, but how, what exposure? I mean, the lessons you learn at such a young age, mm -hmm. like you were saying, just your freshman year, to be able to experience this level of play, that's pretty incredible. Okay, anything else happen your freshman year? <laughs> No, besides that, I think that's it. That's a that, lot. That's some big time experiences to get so young. Mm -hmm. Which, which it was amazing. To me, it makes yeah. sense because the way you play now <laughs> is but like you incredible. Have seen you know, me the way I played then. <laughs> <laughs> See, so so you girls out there and and boys that are starting on your passion, on your hopes and dreams, don't like kind of count yourself out at where you are mm -hmm. yeah yeah those, those first uh, reps yeah they lay the foundation for how you play later yeah it's yeah. about like being at every practice like trying your hardest working outside of practice like if i wasn't doing my own stuff i probably would not be very good right now yeah. Yeah. see so it's it's a testament to just being having that spirit of trying right mm -hmm. and just appreciating the journey Okay, so that was freshman year. Yeah. What happened sophomore year? So sophomore year. Oh, wait, year. before I jump ahead, 
Now, you also had to maintain academics yeah. during all this play, right? I, yes, I think my freshman year was probably my worst year, but I mean, my, my grades weren't bad. They were like a 3.8, but still. It was worse than normal. <laughs> okay. Not bad, bad 3.8. But you know what? Like, you just saying that just helps our viewers know that we got to manage, mm -hmm. you know, the standard, right? Yeah. To hit this mark, you got to appreciate the process of growing your talent mm -hmm. at the same time being mindful of your academics. Yes. Because what I'm hearing from you is that you didn't just throw your academics away knowing you're going to be this superstar as a freshman super playing super international. I don't know. <laughs> it's, you know, it's obvious that you have goals to really go to a good academic school. Yeah. yeah. My um my parents taught me a lot of discipline and like hard work and stuff. So at a young age I always was obsessed. I was like it was crazy how like O C D I was about my grades. I was like, it has to be an A. It has to be an A. But yeah. like um, Listen to that guys. <laughs> Listen to it. Can't can't sleep at night because you're managing that. Oh, I could definitely sleep. <laughs> that was not a good thing. All I did was sleep in C ten. But, you know, I think what you mentioned is, is great because parents, you do have an impact on your kids by showing them that they can reach this level, aspiring for more. And I'm so grateful, you know, Malia, like many of our kids that we've worked with this year, have a supportive family yeah. behind her because you do work in the dynamics of a family. It's never just Malia on her own achieving and then yeah. the other siblings. Tell me how many kids are in um, the... I have five the, brothers and one sister. Five brothers, <laughs> one sister, and Malia, seven kids, mm -hmm. plus all, mom all and the, dad. All, the, all that time and resources being split, what, five, six different ways? <laughs> right. It's amazing. Yeah. Right, and so having so many athletes, too. I mean, athletics is expensive for yeah. families, and I'm sure these trips, you know, yeah. were expensive. Well, um, I've had a job since I was 14 years old, and I've paid for most of the trips all by myself. Besides Paris, because I was little, I paid for like half of it. <laughs> oh my gosh, Malia! So you've got grades going on, you've got athletics, plus you had a job. Okay, guys, no excuses out there, right? <laughs> Like, this is kind of what you had to manage, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you were traveling at that young age, did you have someone go with you, or was mom and dad able to be there? How um, did that work out? So, actually, Michael Kressler and Orlando, my coaches, okay. I, they're really trusted. Like, we trust them. They're like my family. Okay. So, I basically just flew with them and stuff, because mom good. and dad couldn't afford to come, but yeah. they watched me on the, on the little live stream thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, Julia, that's so awesome. So we're hearing a lot of great things. Now let's go move forward to your sophomore year. Talk a little bit about some highlights there. Yeah, so my sophomore year, I played for East for sevens and then Brighton okay. for fifteens. Um, during when we played with Brighton, we combined with Wasatch and we played Brossatch. Um, Brossatch. <laughs> Shout out to Brossatch out there. <laughs> that name was an accident. I didn't mean to bring oh. that up. Okay. <laughs> Forget about that. No, no, no. Like, they were like, let's make a name. And I was like, Brossatch as a joke. And then right. it stuck. And it was kind of ugly. <laughs> um, but, but, that just shows, this is a, two, this is a team, that, two teams that combined mm -hmm. to make a team so that you guys could get on the field and play. Yeah. yeah. And I love the chemistry of rugby because, like, no matter what the team is, like, on the field, you guys can, like, be going up against each other, fighting each other, you know? But right as you step off the field, you guys are like best friends. Like, yeah. 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 Most of the teams, I'm like, yeah. Hey! I know. <laughs> I've noticed that that girls have goodwill mm -hmm. towards each other. Like, they, they're excited when you guys, um, well, they're seeing you, obviously, <laughs> move forward. And, and, and it gives and them I've, hope. And I've seen both sides, the boys and the girls. Mm -hmm. Girls just kind of get they're it. Supportive. They're supportive. They're very supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see that so much in the boys game, you know. I feel they're, like they're more competitive. They're more competitive and standoffish. And they're not hanging out with each other yeah. after the after the mm -hmm. games. I go to the girls' side, and they already We're know each other's like... lives. And these are separate teams, right? Yeah. But they go yeah. to each other's things and support, support. and they're their, they're their uh, cheering section. And it's a whole different team. Yeah. But, but they know each other, and they're comfortable. They're comfortable. They can be competitive. Yet still support. Yeah. yeah, and it's hard to cheer for both teams when you know everyone on both teams. You're like, yeah, wait, no, yeah, 
That's right. So let's talk Very a little cool. bit of, about sophomore year. What were some of the highlights for you there? Um, I think one of my favorite memories from sophomore year was playing in nationals with Brassach. Okay. Um, yeah, it was really fun. I just loved the team that we had. They were amazing. Like, I loved all the girls. And we played really well. Um, Lando coached us, which is great because he's my main coach. Um, <laughs> I think we did really well for the players we had. We did it um, during our last game. We actually went into double overtime and we won wow. with kicks. What? Yeah. Yeah. Just with the kicks, yeah. the points, right? Mm -hmm. From the kicks. Because we were tied. That's super close. Yeah, we were tied and then we did two five minute overtimes and we we're still tied. Oh my gosh. And then, so I made the first kick, Ari made the second kid, kick, and Marley made the third kick. And oh my goodness. <laughs> That wow. Awesome. That's so awesome. that was Nationals? Yeah. Where was nationals. that played? It was played in Murray, actually, in Utah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And that was your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. You guys won Nationals. Oh, we did not win. Oh, did not win. <laughs> <laughs> but during our last game, it was During the last game. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And do you remember, like, how many teams showed up from... Oh, there was lots of teams. Um, I, if I had to guess, I'd say, like, 16. Okay. That's that's a pretty good tournament representing the nation, right? Yeah. Okay. The winner, the team that won was South Bay from oh, California. From California. And the team that got second was Kahuku from Hawaii. Shout out to those rugby teams because they are awesome. Right. Awesome, <laughs> and they have talent year after year. Mm -hmm. Really well established rugby program. I was gonna say we were we were at that tournament. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were there. And, and they were playing. they were playing really well. Oh my goodness! United yeah. got third. Okay. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I erased that. But, <laughs> but, she erased that from her memory. You know, <laughs> since we've been um, involved in rugby, you know, our boys played, our girls played. Man, women's rugby. I've never seen something do more for um, a young woman in high school, right? Mm -hmm. A young a uh, young girl. Um, for confidence, mm -hmm. for belonging, yeah. and it could be any um, background, right? Any kind yeah. of demographic. So they're so welcoming, and the confidence that I've seen in a lot of women that have uh, participated in the women's rugby, man, unreal. I mean, even for our own daughter, and that's just one example, mm -hmm. um, came away uh, with uh, all kinds of values and, and strengths uh, because of her rugby teammates. And, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like a family, and it's yeah. amazing yeah. to be part of a, a second family. With Always them. welcomed. Yeah, yes. they're excited to see you, and then and they just. And they protect you, right? They, they, mm -hmm. they, just, they will uh, always have your back. <laughs> they will always have your back. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up, Aloma. I have to agree. For parents that are out there, they're really trying to find something for their kids to feel good about and to wake up and know that they have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Rugby has been such a blessing. And I know many of our sports are like, to the hilt, like they've got 90 kids on the football team and yeah. 90 kids on the swim team and volleyball and basketball, but rugby has really been something yeah. that that really has room mm -hmm. because it's a growing sport. And so, so and that, it doesn't even matter your background or your you know where you're from, how much money you make, or mm -hmm. what nationality you are, mm -hmm. ethnicity. Man, it's it's the most welcoming sport I've ever been a part of. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so that was sophomore year. That was the highlight. Any other tours you took that year? Yeah, so we actually went to Florida for Tropical Sevens. It's actually coming up this year. I'm really excited. Nice. But okay. Yeah, that was one of my, that was probably my favorite tournament I've ever been that was in the United States. Is that right? Yeah. Tell us why. Um, it was so welcoming. The hotel we stayed in was really nice. Of and course. There was like, <laughs> yeah. And there was the, it was a five star resort. Five star. I, it was wow. Nice. Okay, how do we get on that board? <laughs> Just come. Um, yeah, the fields were amazing. The teams mm -hmm. there were all really friendly, and there was really good competition. Was, Very cool. Yeah. So that's like a national tournament in Florida. Is it annually? or? Yeah, it's annually. It happens every year, but last year got canceled. It was okay. very sad. Yeah. <laughs> so this year they're going to have one, right? Yeah. It's next week? We actually leave on Tuesday. Tuesday. And, and, it's a, and that's a high level of rugby, right? It's usually all-star teams. And, yeah. yeah. There's also a camp that we go to, a combine for USA. Oh. So you can get scouted by colleges and like the USA team. Yeah. That is really so cool. So I'm, I'm going to brag up a little bit about what we're involved in, but 
We're, you know, I'm currently the uh, USA Rugby Scout for scouting. Utah. <laughs> but it crushes me that I'm not scouting down in Orlando <laughs> where the Tropical Nationals. Sevens is going to be, you know. Oh, man, yeah. So that, and Maybe we'll have that to find a way. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe somebody's going to send me a ticket. Sponsor. <laughs> Any sponsors out there that would like to help? <laughs> but what a great opportunity, you know, on a national stage, especially at a young age. You're talking about a sophomore. Yeah. So is that when the coaches started reaching out, or was it? Yeah, um, okay. I think I got a lot more coaches noticing me at the Orlando tournament. I also got interviewed by the um, Rugby Seven magazine, mm -hmm. but it's really ugly, so please don't watch it. <laughs> but just a magazine for <laughs> sophomore year. Um, yeah, uh, the West Point coach is talking to me a lot, so is Harvard and a couple of the other coaches. It wow. Really nice. It's a really great way to get scouted, is just to go to tournaments, to go and tourn okay. like outside of your state. Man, so keep that in mind, parents, as you're managing your funding for um, your re you know, Your the limited sport. resources, yes. right? Yes, yeah. You can prioritize your resources to maybe hit some of these key tournaments. I know Las Vegas Sevens was always a key oh, tournament. I love yes, Las Vegas Sevens. Many of the coaches attend, I, yeah, and the coaches like, like the attending years. where they can see all the great teams and all the great mm -hmm. talent, right? So you know, Tropical Sevens is going to be one. Um, but and if NAIs. you can manage your oh NAI's and NAI's here Tropical Sevens NAI's Vegas, but Vegas now is um, LA Sevens LA now. now, right? Yeah. I Keep love how you just whip it all off. Like, <laughs> this, 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 this. Go to all these three main ones that if you go to, you will get noticed. So for, for rugby, this is this is what we're talking about. It's worth the investment because the college coaches are there. Yeah. So you get on their radar. And do you need, so you needed an invite, though, to the Tropical Sevens. Yes, I okay. went with the Utah Lions. Okay. Um, it, we had tryouts, and, yeah, we got 12 girls, and we went. It was nice. Really fun. Okay, so this is sophomore year. Anything else happened sophomore year? We went a lot of other places, but I mean, I think junior year is going to take a while, so we might want to. Okay, <laughs> so in the interest of... <laughs> let's, let's touch on a little bit, because we're, we're trying to find activities that, are, are, that we need to put in the application, right? So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about service and leadership opportunities maybe that you have. Like freshman school? or sophomore year. Well, yeah, in or, school, everything outside of rugby uh -huh. would count, or rugby too. Yeah, so definitely work was one of them I put down because I had three different jobs. I worked as like a janitor, I worked in the food industry, and then I also manufactured like machine parts for my grandpa. Um, wow, that's <laughs> awesome though. Not at that's the same time, but like, okay. you know. Yeah, 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 but machine parts, that's a, an unusual job, right? Yeah. Talk a little bit about that, like what does that look like? Um, He has a company and he... You just make all the little parts to make a big machine. So you just like be over there one day, you'll make this part over and over, and the next day, you'll make the next part. Very cool. Did that foster any kind of interest in? I actually or... really liked it. You did? Yeah, but I feel like over a long period of time, I would lose interest. But it was, right. it was a really good experience. Okay, very cool. So at the same time, how were your grades with all this travel and jobs? They were. They, yeah, it was really, they were good. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to brag about it, but they were pretty good. Did you yeah. have to, like, like, tell your teachers, like, hey, I gotta be off this week? Yeah. And how did that affect, like, your grades? I think it really helped with my time management skills as a student athlete. Mm -hmm. Like, I think you gotta learn, like, this is what I need to do ahead of time, because I'd always get all my homework done before the week I left, so I don't have to stress. Did you hear coming. that? Get your homework done before <laughs> you leave. Before you get wow. the Because then you're not stressed at your tournament. You can have fun at your tournament, and when you come back, you're, you're like, already done. Mom and Dad, you got to be so, <laughs> so proud. You know, when you think about kids that, that maybe are trying to manage things and, and they have more time, sometimes you think you should be able to get, get it all done. And here you have someone that has less time still getting it done. So kudos you know, to you. And there's, some, there's something to be said to be um, so busy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and when you're doing your, you're managing your time, you look like you see maybe one hour, two hour, two hours available, right? Oh, that's so, so nice. So, <laughs> so, She's like, when does that ever happen? The point I'm making is, 
You've a lot of time to, to get an assignment done, mm -hmm. and you get it done, and then you move on, right? Yeah. Sometimes when you're given the whole day to get the assignment yeah, done, yeah, then you might you waste all of that time and still not get it done. Yeah. So there's something. So go to be get a said. job. <laughs> something to be said with being uh, very busy and having things like. Also, you know, I'm I'm an adult, um, and I hear okay. this all the time from leaders. Uh, and so from leaders and, 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 and owners of companies and, and that sort, you know, they usually give uh, assignments to the busiest, especially the mm -hmm. most important assignments, to the busiest person yeah. in the organization, right? Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Because they know it's going to get done. It's gonna, yeah. Because they, they prioritize, to, right? They're used they to being very busy and, and, and getting things done when they need to get done. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, Good skill. My freshman and sophomore year, I was also part of the People of the Pacific Club at my school, which nice. is really good because yeah. I got to learn a lot about my culture, like all the other cultures of like Polynesian people. We learned a lot of the language, like the dances, mm. songs, the food. That was my favorite part, personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was just really cool to like learn about our heritage. So you have all these plates spinning, your, your club and leadership and working and academics and travel. How do you keep it all together? Like what helps you kind of just like not get so overwhelmed? Um, honestly, I feel like I've been doing it for a lot of my life. I'm just kind of used to it. Okay. Um, but if I did get overwhelmed, I'll just take a nap because, you know, sleep's my best friend. <laughs> and then, we and love then, naps. And then I'll wake up and be like, okay, Malia, you got a nap. You got to do it now. <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. You were able to rest now and it's time to get going. Yeah. So you do have to prioritize some downtime, mm -hmm. right? It can't just be fully booked. You can't just go, go, go all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said that. Okay, so we're moving forward with junior year. Yes. Because this is a big year, <laughs> you like said, for you. taking forever. I'm no, so you're good. You're good. Okay, so good my junior year was my favorite year. It was great. So uh, during August, I got invited to the All-American Camp in uh, Canada. Okay. Yeah, so we spent a week in Canada on this beautiful island and we mm. played 15s against Canada and we just like had to, like played against them. It was really fun. Wow. Oh, wow. So junior year, you actually were deemed an All-American as yes. part of the national. Like officially. Officially All-American. That's yeah, awesome. It was really exciting. Okay. The girls that were there were all amazing. Like I had so much fun. We stayed in the dorms of this high school that looked like a college. <laughs> and it was really nice. Very cool. Awesome. And what month was that then? That Do you was remember? in August. In August of your junior year. Yes. Okay, so, it's so like fairly at the very early. Beginning. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then August, September. I, September, we went to Paris. <laughs> Again. <laughs> For the tournament. De, I'm going to say it so white, but the tournament de capitals or whatever. Okay. So, um, but yeah, we were there for like a week and a half, too. Um, we played with the Lions that time. The North American Lions. North American Lions. Yeah, and so it wasn't just Utah. Like, it was all over America and all over Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so that's pretty good. Yeah, so it was Utah, fun. or USA and Canada combined mm -hmm. going to Paris. Yeah. Wow. It was really That's got to be a super competitive team. And, yeah, and we got to run out of the stadium, and that is the best feeling ever. Oh! It, was, it was awesome. Oh, nice. man. Yeah. Through the tunnel. Out wow. Of the awesome. How did you manage nerves? You know, playing at that level. I think that everyone's always going to have nerves, no matter how, like... Get over okay, the nerves because you you're going to have them. Okay. You're going to have them. But like, I think when you're on the field and you realize that, oh, my sisters have my back and nice. it's okay, they won't let anything happen to me. Right as the ball kicks off, because before kickoff, I'm always scared. I don't even care what I'm playing. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> but right as the balls kick off and someone gets that first hit, you're like, okay, we can do this. We're good. Nice. You're good to go. So Paris again. Was it easier this time knowing that you've been there before? Um, Some of the teams were really... Like, because the time before, they both had really competitive teams. But I like the teams we played this time better because okay. they were, like, really, really high level, like, really skilled teams. Oh, wow. And I liked the competition. So, yeah, it was really fun. Um, we, I think we played three or four games each day. Okay. And it was just three or like, four games, man. That's a lot yeah. of rugby. Yeah, mm -hmm. we stayed in um the same like hostel and stuff. Like, okay. and then all of the teams, we just all like Hong Kong, um, the U UK team. What's that called? 
I think the UK. UK um, team, yeah. yeah, Australia. We were all in the same like hostels. So we would like go into the lobby and all just hang out together and we got to know like different people. Mm. Wow, I'm getting a sense from you that you're comfortable with competition. I love competition. <laughs> I don't like easy games. Okay. Like they're fun, but like yeah. I'd rather I'd rather have a really really close game okay. than like win by like a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like that natural like you know makeup of your character just allowed you to manage things really well. Yeah. And, Thank and you. I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but you know everyone can be looking at Malia like everything in life is perfect, right? <laughs> but I got to tell you what, when I meet people on on the rugby, you know, um, the rack, and we're out there, I've gotten so many compliments about your nature. You're just like Aww. a good, good, you know, down to earth person. Like someone told me, like she. Didn't have practice with the girls, so she'd just show up and play with the boys. And she didn't have shoes, so she'd just run on the field like with the athletes. And it's like, you know, I'm I'm listening to you. And she's and you're pulling like, up in this truck. Yeah, oh, my truck is cute. This okay, is a legendary you know? truck. Give it up for the truck. She has to climb <laughs> through the passenger seat uh, window just to. Just to get into the truck and start it up. It's a broken go. bumper, broken windshield. But you know what? This it's tells so me. Then she, puts, she shows up at the field, starts playing, and just dominates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Takes the heads off people. <laughs> but you know, what I, what I mean to, to share is that sometimes in life when you don't take yourself so seriously, even mm -hmm. when you're on such a high level of competitiveness and of, you know, achievement, I feel like it grounds you in a way that you just welcome more good things mm -hmm. to come in, you know? And so I want you families out there, and especially you kids, <laughs> to just kind of work through life with an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, know that it's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. It sets you up for the next, you know, level of, of play, of achievement in a way that it's okay, right, mm -hmm. if we're not the best player on the field yeah. or we're not the most, like, wealthiest person, yeah. like, we can still do things. And I just mm -hmm. love that attitude about you. I love my truck. My mom, my parents actually are like, Malia, we can sell your truck and get you a better truck. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's my truck. He's cute. He's my favorite. I, I love that. I wish I could put a picture of him just right there. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll share it actually. We'll share it on our on our Manuia site. So you can appreciate the blessing, right? Just having this friend of yours, this truck, this Itachi. I know. So so Wait, do you have a name for your truck? His name's Itachi. <laughs> our kids would name our car too. And trust me, we'd have broken down handles where you couldn't even get. Yeah. You know what? But that was the van. We had a van, right? That everyone would want to ride in. It's <laughs> it's because it's good vibes, Malia. You're yeah. good vibes. Yeah. So yeah. junior year, what else happened in that year? So September, October, I went to Tahiti. <laughs> okay, Aloha. So, yeah, so um, during the NAIs, which was in August that I forgot to mention. Okay. Because that was technically sophomore year. Um, this girl named Hina came down from Tahiti to play with us, and I was like her host. So she stayed oh, at my nice. house. Oh, nice. Okay. And so then she invited me to go a tournament at her house and she was gonna host me oh, wow. so yeah basically all i had to pay for was my plane ticket i was on the team to tahiti yeah <laughs> i was playing in a women's tournament and we actually took the championship wow <laughs> so women what age group is that then oh, over 19 I, was, or? I think i was the youngest one there i was 16 and then the women's were from like I think the next youngest was Heba, who's 17. So it's like everywhere from 16 okay. to like 35. Like it was wow. women's. Wow. It was women's. It was yeah. women's. <laughs> and how did that level of competition? Um, honestly, I I like the competition, but like I like the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I love the competition there. But like right after you gotta go lay in the beach because she lived on the beach. Wow. So like it was just super nice. Life is good to you. Her family is amazing. Yeah. And then, like, see, this is why. What I'm did so you eat? That's what I want to eat. <laughs> oh. What was your favorite food? Oh. Oh. That is very hard. There's a <laughs> lot of good stuff that we ate. 
They made some really good curry. And oh. oh, yes, we love curry. We <laughs> love curry. So this trip, and this was kind of early in the fall then. You're still in the fall of yeah. your junior year. Yeah, so all of these trips, I like with my jobs, I paid for all of them. And I paid for half, wow, of, oh, yeah. half of the Paris one because my mom wanted to help me out. Okay. But she was like, no, you can't go to um, Tahiti unless you pay for it yourself. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll pay for it myself. <laughs> so <laughs> see, I there's all the money. Right and I was there. like, okay, I'm going to pay for it myself. So I worked a lot and I just, I made sure I could go. That is so awesome. And what's funny is during the championship game, I knocked out my two front teeth. Oh no! Because <laughs> I'm stubborn and I don't wear a mouthpiece, so get used to it while you're like. Wear your mouthpiece. <laughs> Take care of I yourself, hate it. girl. It's terrible. Okay. Um, yeah, so I came back and I just got my braces off. And I had to pay for my own teeth. Too. Oh, no. <laughs> it was after braces? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Malia, you're poor parents. So I, we just, like, spent really, this money we just spent this money and now you have to fix your own face. And I was like, okay, I'll fix my own face. Aww, That's why what this a beautiful teeth right face. Here is still chipped. Oh, I see. And this one was not completely out. Okay. Wow. Okay. Can, that's a can do. Yes. Can do attitude. Can right. do right there. So. Where did that take you next with junior year? Um, junior year next, um, then I just played with Brighton. Yeah. Brighton, yeah, I played with Brighton. And then I was invited by Martha Danes. Do you remember the camp that I yep. said was in Canada? Yeah. Um, they selected, because they had two Canada trips, one for the west and one for the east. Right, I remember and that And so one. they picked the bet, like the top girls from both groups okay. and had them play at the Olympic Training Center in California right, against right. Canada. So okay. in um, December, we like literally were there from Christmas till New Year's. Right, um, I remember yeah, that. We played against Canada at the Olympic Training Center. Man, you've definitely had some experiences I there. know, I'm so grateful, like it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm still, I'm like still in awe of you keep managing your grades with all this travel, like that's yeah. a lot of trips it's, there. It's a lot because um, most of my teachers I had to talk to them beforehand, be like, I'm going to be gone a lot in your class. What do I need to do to make sure my grades stay up? Okay. And Communication um, is key. Nope. Yes. Some teachers are trash, but I mean, if you communicate early. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they don't They're a little stubborn. with you? <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that, but I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think that after just like, creating a relationship with your teachers and knowing like, hey, if you give me stuff to do, I'll do it and I'll keep my grades up. I'll pay attention in your class. Like when I wasn't gone, I was always like, my attendance was really good. I was always there mm. because I needed to make sure my grades stayed up. Nice. So my junior year, even though I was gone the most, like I maintained a 4.0 GPA the entire time. And that's when you had most of your trips. Yeah, that's when I had most and of And you had trips. the highest GPA was your junior year. Wow, Malia, that's incredible. This isn't a, a testament of what can be done. And if, she worked and paid if, for those trips. If, if this is your, if this is what you want to do, and you put it in your mind, this is what that's your goal. These are some of the, some of the things, some of the sacrifices you can make, and it's totally doable. It's worth it. No. It's worth it. No. Wow. So, what was the highlight then of your junior year? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> It must have been like a beach or a resort. <laughs> oh, that's so hard. Um, I actually think my favorite was when we were in Canada. Okay. Because all of the girls there were amazing. I loved all of them. We practiced a lot and we like got really close. And so like now I have friends on all the different teams. Oh, like around the US. You, yeah, you built yeah, relationships you built the now. bonds. Yeah. So when we go to tournaments, we're like, oh my gosh, hi. You get you to know? connect you again. You gotta like see your friends again. I also think like it was also on the beach and we jumped into the water and swam with the seals, which is very dangerous, but oh, wow. we wow. did that. It was just it was a really fun tournament. I wow. think that was my favorite. So junior year, how many trips do you think in all that you had to or were invited, I guess, to participate in. Besides the those ones? Or yeah, the just the junior year. The number's going up. <laughs> I, think, I think nine. Nine, yeah. wow. And how did you sustain your body? Like, was it really 
I mean, rugby's such a contact sport, <laughs> yeah. if you haven't already known. How, how was their recovery for your body? I think that one of the most important things is sleep. Like, you okay. can do all of this other stuff to make sure you're okay, but as, if your sleep schedule is off, like, mm. you're going to be kind of out of it. Okay. So, yeah, I tried, it's, yeah, I wasn't busy. I was gonna make a joke. I was gonna make a joke, but it wouldn't have worked. I was gonna be like, I have no friends, so I could just leave. <laughs> well, you know, but you do make a good point because social life has to kind of take a back seat sometimes. Sacrifice. Right. Sometimes. But for good reason, yeah. right? And I don't think my social life really took a back seat because I still had like all my teammates that I was with. Yeah, so oh, it's just there yeah, you go. like I'm still with all my sisters. But like dating, like, did dating <laughs> <laughs> Why did you laugh? Oh, oh, oh boy, wow. did you put on hold? Put on hold. I, I was there a prom? Did you go to the prom at all? I was um, asked to prom, but that's when Corona hit, so I couldn't go. Darn it. Yeah. It's all right. It's lost. all right. So let's let's talk about the senior year now, mm -hmm. which has been, I mean, it's junior year. Really yeah. Interesting. Right. Because junior year you traveled quite a bit, and now what happened senior year? Yeah, so because Corona hit, it was supposed to be my year. Like I was yeah. so excited. I was supposed to go to Portugal okay. and New Zealand. Those were the two I was so excited for, but wow. they wouldn't let us go. So because the borders, yeah. yeah because of Corona. Mm -hmm. So I feel like uh, senior year has been a really good idea of teaching me like to enjoy like the moments you have like with your family and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Because you kind of really, you had to be home a lot and you had to like kind of talk to them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were all stuck in the house. Yeah. So it's like, what are you going to do? So I think I got a lot closer with them. And then you, that's when you guys helped me with my application, which is really nice. <laughs> oh, well, we were lucky. You know, I, I must say there's so many great uh, girls and, and young men out there that we've been able to be a part of their journey because as you heard Malia talk every year she was growing right mm -hmm. in in your athletics in academics. your academics even pushing that mindset which I think is so key like if you wanted something it wasn't like well I'm not I can't afford it mom and dad aren't gonna pay yeah so I guess I can't go I mean, you found a way, you're like, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to work, but I'm, you know, and so these are the key things that we want to share with families is that things can work out, but like Alima says, you have to organize, you have to prioritize, you know, it's not going to happen just kind of sitting on the bed and just kind of hanging out and thinking, oh, I wish I could do, but actually getting out there doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's your senior year. Um, what was different and what worked for you in a sense that you're still able to hit your goals. Yeah. So my senior year, I tried to take a lot of like, so I took C-Tech classes, which are through UVU. So I was taking okay. um, them for physical therapy and sports medicine. Wow. Which I was very excited for because I've been wanting to do that since my freshman year, but I had, I wanted to make You're it. You're busy. I wanted to make it, yeah. But I wanted to make it my senior year so my senior year could have fun. Okay. So, like, I kind of took all the crappy classes first. Okay, <laughs> just those ones that get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was really fun because that's something I'm really passionate about. So I got to do those. And then I was also taking um, college math and English. Oh, wow. Yeah, I so thought through the, through the UVU, right? Yeah, um, through, that one was through Slick. So oh, was, through Slick. Was, Shout out to Slick. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> so I was registered with two different colleges, and I didn't even take any high school classes at first. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. But so um, I think that Corona in general just really helped me with that, because mm -hmm. if I would have been traveling so much, I wouldn't have been able to do those to classes. To do those mm -hmm. things that you and wanted to do. And I really wanted to do them, so I think it kind of worked out in my favor a little bit. Wow. Um, yeah, it was really good. Um, so then in September, uh, I got Martha Dangs. She is the All-American. Um, yes. She's amazing. <laughs> I love her. But she recommended me to this program called the Hawks, which is the USA developmental team. Wow. And so this is the national team. Yeah. Huh? Nope. Wow. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, but so they talked to me and they were like, would you be willing to do these camps as like a remote player? So like there's the, mm. there's the seniors who are on the USA team. Right. And then there's the residents of the Hawks 
which stay there, like in California, oh, and keep going. Okay. And then the remote is like, because I have school, other people have college and stuff. Okay. You fly out every once in a while, and you go to the camps with the like players, and then you come back. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this is not for like what age group is this then? Um. It's for uh, the it's, national team. Yeah, uh, which it's is, like has no age group, right? Uh, so national yeah. team, Hawks, mm -hmm. and the remote. So you're you're looking at the greater development squad for for the national team. Yeah. Anybody goes down from for the you. national team, these people get pulled up. Yeah. So I think there was twelve girls in our group, yeah. and I was the youngest one. Oh so my cool. goodness! <laughs> that is quite an accomplishment, oh, a national you. team. But you know, I'm not surprised, Malia, because each year has been a building block, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's what we're trying to tell you, parents and and kids out there is that don't discount this time in your life where work needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, you reach this certain benchmark this year, right? You talked about freshmen, sophomore, junior, and seniors. And sure, Malia is just this awesome example, but, but the, no, <laughs> the concept is the same thing, Malia. You don't put a history of activities together by just waiting your junior year yeah you know and certainly um you peaked right at the right time mm -hmm. your junior year because who knew you know yeah. a pandemic right your senior year i'm so happy i got to do all of that my junior year yeah and i also think something good about the pandemic that helped a lot was on uh, my brother and i he works with special needs adults okay and so i got to spend more time with them like we went to the pool and we went like you take it the was, group yeah, on the it was so nice yeah. to like get to connect wow. and hang out with them a lot so i use that as one of my activities as well nice that and, is huge. and you know that's what you 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 have to think about is what is it that resonates with you yeah. it's going to be different for each person but you have to kind of step out and explore that, you know, at a young age. And, and certainly for Malia, she had to kind of manage, you know, all of these these trips and working mm -hmm. with the time she had to do, the things she really, you know, wanted to get into, but she still plugged them in, mm -hmm. right, when you did have that time. And she didn't let a pandemic hurt her chances because her senior year was pretty much wiped out. Yeah. Right? But she made choices so that it... It strengthened that application because long before the senior year, we've got to tell what she, what all this has uh, enabled her to apply and to. Because have we told that story yet? I don't think so. Okay. No. Oh, but maybe. No. Yeah. <laughs> we, no we need to interview her and then and let her know. I mean, I, I'll let her share her story. Yeah. She's at right now. You you tell them um, your. I guess your little bit of the journey from meeting us and then how you were able to get to where you are today. For sure. So Alema actually approached me at a sevens tournament, like, <laughs> <laughs> and he handed me his card and I went, oh, thanks. And so the day I actually got accepted into the Hawks, mm. that was the day my brother got in a car crash with three of his friends. Um, one of them passed away. And the other what they were both in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so I was very stressed out and I really needed someone to like help me and encourage me because my parents were down in St. George. Right. Like I was taking care of my brothers because right. my um, older siblings were out of the house or working and like I had to take the responsibility of taking care of them. Wow. And I was also trying to get my applications in and I was like very stressed out. So like giving me your car was like the thing I needed to keep me going because I was about to break down. I was like, <laughs> I was so close. And so like, um, I think it really helped me to have you like encourage me and keep my time management. Like you gave me confidence in the stuff I was writing about and like you helped my essay a lot. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I just thought that it was a, a great outlet to like, help me get into the colleges that I wanted to apply for. So I, through their help, I got early application to Harvard, which is pretty cool. Like their daughter, <laughs> she's amazing. <laughs> and so um, I was waiting for my likely letter and Geraldine spent a lot of time helping me edit my essay. And like, she made it 
what I wanted it to be, but I couldn't mm. express. Your heart was yeah. there. Y you the know, substance was there. And and as you as you've been able to listen, right, to Malia's story, you can sense the journey. And and this is what we have to put on paper, and it's kind of tough, right? <laughs> to narrow it down to how many words? Six hundred and fifty yeah, words. I know we had to take out so many like ands and buts and like <laughs> we were just trying to make them like conjunctions, so we have like <laughs> But but you know, this is the beauty of taking all your work and all mm -hmm. your effort and putting it into these 650 words in a way that when they see your list of activities and then they read your statement mm -hmm. and then they're able to get those letters of recommendation, it's like you can't deny these yeah. kids. Aww. They're such great kids. And thank you so much, Mom and Dad, for all the work you've done in raising Come such a Lori. beautiful... Did a great job. Yeah. And, and you know what? We're here as just the bystanders. You guys are <laughs> really... Bystanders? No! <laughs> you're Look, really the shining star. I just want to make a point. Yeah. Um, you heard her story three years yes. before she opened up that application. All that activity to shape her character and serve some leadership as well. There was... She was not sh struggling to find something to put down on that paper. Yeah. Yeah. So compare that to the student that opens up that application for the first time as a junior and didn't have any of those activities. Fresh the history, right? Sophomore, those history. Junior seasons, you know, these things, experiences that have shaped their lives. Now you're, you're an um, you're a applica application reader at a university mm -hmm. and you got two applicants there and you get the one that opened up as, you know, maybe a great writer, maybe you know, uh, very creative and with, but no substance. And you have this one that has all the substance because there's passion there. There's uh, learning experiences there. All these things that shape the character of the, of the applicant. So this is what we're trying to say. Give yourselves a chance. Yes. Give yourselves a chance. Set yourself up early. Organize yourself <laughs> as a ninth grader, tenth yeah. grader, to be involved in these activities that help shape, shape your life. So that when you finally open up that application junior year, like we did, you rolling well, into no, yeah. senior year, right? Senior year, actually. Senior In fact, I got to hand it to Malia, because when you met Malia, it was October. Yeah. And the I early edition like was <laughs> November 1st. And, yeah. and, okay, we were just like thinking, all right, how do we put this all together? But I got to tell you, the work was done. <laughs> all this work was done, and it was just packaging, right? Yeah. We, we knew that she had all these things completed, you know, experiences to expect. So I knew that we, we just needed to carve out time for the personal essay. Mm -hmm. All this other stuff in the application was doable. We can knock yeah. out the tasks, yeah. you know, one, one or two uh, every other day or something like that. But we needed to carve out the time yeah. Yeah, that was going to spend mostly on that personal essay. But what was great, I didn't worry about it because I knew that I knew who you were and some of the experiences you've had, and you were going to fill in those blanks. No problem. Oh. It would have been no problem. Thank you. I couldn't say that for every student, right, that I've helped. And, but you did. You had done the hard yards, you know, yes. as they say in rugby. Thank you so much. And I, it helped so much, your weekly Zoom meetings. They, like, uplifted me. You guys were all like, you can do it. And I was like, yay! <laughs> yes, I can! <laughs> and it just it made me really happy to have, like, that support system in a time that I, like, really, really needed it. Mm -hmm. um, and then Coach Mel Dunham was also amazing, and she set me up for multiple different things for like personal circumstances. Nice. So like I wrote a personal circumstance essay about like what was going on in my life and like why um, some things may not be like as as they're supposed to be. Right. right. Perfect, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're so grateful to have Maria on <laughs> tonight. So sorry. And it's been a little longer, but we want to show you the journey because we don't want parents and families to discount this time. You know, when they say, when should I work with a child? Well, guess what? The day they're born, right? And I know that sounds kind of like, what do you mean by that? But it's how you talk to your child. It's how you set them up to feel like they can achieve things. And so that's why we're so grateful for good parents out there um, that have really prioritized 
the raising of their child in a way that's given them every advantage. And certainly we know there are more kids out there like Malia who've been working hard. Circumstances don't have to be perfect, but we need to put it together in a way that shows that you are worth investing in, that good things come. And, and certainly that was the case as Alema worked with Malia, you know, with checking the boxes on this workflow process within three weeks, you were able to put in. And how did you feel like when you got Yes, I got my likely letter on November 3rd and it was so, such, it was an amazing day. December, December 3rd? I think it was November 3rd. And then I had to wait till December 17th. Yes. Oh, the likely right. letter. The oh, likely sorry, sorry, letter. Sorry, sorry. No, yes, yeah, you're yes. good. Um, the likely that's letter right. on November 3rd, and it was great because the first person I got to tell was my brother, and Aww. he was there. And then, yeah, I had so to keep sweet. it quiet till December 17th, which is very hard, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just so exciting, like, all the hard work paid off. So, well, we're so proud of Malia, and congrats to the Isaacs family. Thank you so much for allowing us to work with her. What a gem. We want to thank all of you parents and, and youth out there that have been watching our Facebook Lives the last three weeks. We've tried to help you set yourself up your junior year so that we can package you and present you in a way that we can um, hit the mark uh, for these elite colleges. So, anything else you want to share, Alema? No, it's just it's, it's been incredible uh, to work with great students who have that can-do attitude. Mm -hmm. They're always asking, um, what else can I do? And that's the attitude, right? That's the attitude you got to take into these, these um, processes so that you can achieve the great results that you want. You know? mm -hmm. And if you haven't already watched, uh, Malia was featured on ABC. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Four news! <laughs> but don't watch me, that was the worst. <laughs> It was, it was, you know what, it I was, was so, so wonderful. It was, no. you know what, but that's what happens. You know, being on the news, on the news is, is pretty incredible. So we got to give you No, thank you that. so much. It was all due to you guys. <laughs> and you guys did amazing. <laughs> well, thank you so much, parents and families. Reach out to us if we can help your junior. But more importantly, let's start this history of activities today. And we'll talk with you again soon. Manuela. The glasses came on. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, okay, I gotta end this.